Hello everyone, this is William Armstrong here. I thought I'd actually talk about that from 11 Alive. This talks about, oh boy, this is going to be a doozy, but this is about LGBTQ and religion. It says here, over 260 Georgia, church, Georgia churches break away from United Methodist Church over LGBTQ issues. Embry Hills United Methodist Church pastor said he's never seen an exodus this big. Atlanta, hundreds of congregations are breaking away from the United Methodist Church due to the disagreements over the LGBTQ plus community and their role within the church. Before I continue, my big problem with religion and LGBTQ is why do people that are religious always get torn apart and, and butt hurt and torn apart over LGBTQ? Like, why is it that religion always has detested LGBTQ, it's detested it. This is 2023, not the late 60s, 70s, or early 50s, where LGBTQ back then was easily detested more than it is now. I'll continue to re read the article. The North Georgia United Methodist Conference said that it comprises around 700 churches, 260 con 261 congregations have chosen to disaffiliate which accounts for thir about 38% of their conference. Throughout his 15 years of teaching, Jordan Thrasher, the senior pastor of Embry Hills United Methodist Church in DeKalb County, says he's never seen an exodus this large. It is the biggest one I've seen that has caused so much controversy, but churches for many, many reasons will split over social issues, Thrasher said. The issues seem to boil down to churches allowing LGBTQ plus clergy and same-sex marriage. More, consecutive ch more conservative churches were allowed to leave UMC on November 30th due to what they believe is failure to uphold that homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. I call bullshit because LGBTQ and Christian teaching, it, it, it shouldn't, this shouldn't go without saying, but churches in certain religions teaching that homosexuality is bad that's bullshit i support lgbtq i do but i'm not religious i don't go to church i don't do any of that i don't go to church i don't even talk about church i don't even talk about religion i don't because religion's a hot button sensitive topic and it can cause trouble it says here, these churches went through that process and felt like those anticipated changes do not fully represent their values, Strasher said. Thrasher explained that churches are expected to follow the book of discipline. However, some churches felt leaders were not enforcing bans on officiating LGBTQ weddings and ordaining leaders. Or ordaining leaders. Or ordaining leaders, rather. Thrasher's church is no stranger to taking a stand, as he said, it's one of the first re reconciling UMC churches in the state. Reconciling is an activist organization within the United Methodist Church that focuses on LGBTQIA plus issues and their presence and welcoming in the church, Thrasher said. Embry Hills is one, is one of over 400 NGC churches, NGC churches that chose to stay. Thrasher hopes their church shows others what it looks like on the other side. Lacey Looney is the outreach director with Renovus, a community for LGBTQ plus Christians. At any time, or actually it says, any time there's advancement, there are some rough edges, Looney said. Looney said the disaffiliation announcement surprised her. I don't think it was surprising that it happened, but the number of itself was very surprising, Looney said. Now, I've never heard of anything like that before. Renovus is president of the board of directors, Scott Land Russell, said he hopes that the news invited more queer-identified believers to attend church as the community tends to associate with trauma with the church. This is not the first denomination to go through this, and this will not be the last, Russell said. Russell invites displaced members to Renovus. We would just hope that churches choose love, Russell said. We feel like that's what Jesus chose. NGC said churches that have disaffiliated have until the end of December to fulfill the terms of the agreement, including possible financial obligations. However, several churches have committed to welcoming displaced UMC members called Lighthouse Churches in Hills is one of them. Okay, this that's in the end of the article, but my big complaint with religion and LGBTQ is that people that are Christian, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, like all these religious things target and attack LGBTQ and get divided over social issues, 
and it, it's embarrassing to have people that are religious constantly detest LGBTQ when I feel like it goes a bit too far when religion is dragged into LGBTQ because an example of this is an episode called Arthur. Arthur, the, the Mark Brown TV show Arthur made by Mark Brown and PBS Kids, published by Mark Brown for PBS Kids on TV. Well, the episode called, called Arthur, Mr. Ratburn, and a very special someone gained controversy directly. I'll show you. Hold on. Here's the Arthur Wiki fandom saying Mr. Ratburn and the special someone. This episode launched on May 13th, 2019. It premiered and it originally, it, it air date is May 13th, 2019 and November 5th, 2019 in Canada and it aired July 27th, 2020. It just says here, Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone is the first half of the first episode in the 22nd season of Arthur. Summary, the gang is surprised that Mr. Ratburn's getting married. Plot, one of Mr. Ratburn's usual pop quizzes for the class is interrupted by a phone call from someone named Patty, who's calling to discuss the flower arrangements or something Mr. Ratburn apologizes for the to the class. Explaining that the call was for a wedding, when Muffy asks who's getting married, Mr. Ratburn answers me, the class gasps in surprise. Muffy, Arthur, Buster, and Francine discuss the news at the Sugar Bowl. They are surprised that Mr. Ratburn has a life outside of the school, and they wonder who would marry Mr. Ratburn. Their question is seemingly answered when Mr. Ratburn walks in with a woman named Patty, who is shown to be a stickler, a stickler for perfection. She claims that Mr. Ratburn is too soft, and she will toughen him up. While well, Arthur remarks that they don't that they don't really know what Patty is like, the others insist that they need to split them up because a tougher Mr. Ratburn would be unbearable. The kids find out the hard way of that. Muffy uses an app that turns Mr. A pic, turns a picture of Mr. Ratburn into an animated hippie. Buster and Arthur then trick Mr. Ratburn into making a recording of him reading a children's book, which they sync up with the app and give it to Patty. Unfortunately, Patty just finds the video hilarious, which backfired. The kids move to Plan B, where they try to set Mr. Ratburn up with Mrs. Turner, the librarian. Arthur and Francine stop at the gourmet and chocolate store at Patrick's Chocolates, where the friendly owner Patrick gives them some free samples. They decide that the chocolates are perfect to give Mr. Ratburn to make him fall in love with Mrs. Turner. Patrick hears their plan and remarks that chocolate doesn't necessarily make people fall in love. But he goes along with it, and when Francine and Arthur claim that they're desperate, they tried to lure Mr. Ratburn to the library with chocolate and non-alcoholic champagne, but he was too busy with the wedding preparations. He asked them to return a library book for him, Love Poems by Pablo Neruda. This gives Muffy to the idea to write a love poem from Mr. Ratburn and Ms. Turner. Ms. Turner isn't trolled, however, and returns the poem with corrections to Muffy's bad spelling and grammar and a how-to guide on writing love poems. The kids soon learn that their families are all invited to the wedding. As the last resort, they choose to object during the ceremony. When they arrive, however, they begin to realize that Patty's duties don't seem consistent with that of the brides. When Patty observes that they want to say something, the kids change their minds about objecting and compliment the wedding tent. Patty thanks them, but remarks nothing that would have really been good enough for her younger brother's wedding. This reveals that not only Patty is not the bride but that she's Mr. Ratburn's sister in, in the officiant for the wedding. The kids are surprised to learn this. After questioning who Mr. Ratburn's getting married to a Patty isn't a bride, they discover that their teacher is actually getting married to a man, Patrick, the chocolate, the chocolatier that they met earlier, not a woman. After seeing the two of them walking down the aisle arm in arm instead of being shocked, the kids are pleased as Patrick is, is a friendly person. The kids enjoy cake and the ceremony, after the ceremony and remark that they are happy with how the wedding turned out and that it's a brand new world that now Mr. Ratburn is married. However, observing Mr. Ratburn and Patrick having their first dance, they all agree with embarrassment that the teacher should never dance. Here it is. Here's the controversy and how, it, how this caused quite a stir. Public banning in Alabama. This will tie into earlier in the video I talked about how the churches in Georgia... Some of them have distanced themselves over LGBTQ issues and social issues in general. But this ties into the LGBTQ part. It says they're public banning in Alabama. Sometime around the same week that episode originally aired, 
Alabama Public Television. Alabama Public Television's director of programming, Mike McKenzie, commented, the vast majority of parents will not have heard about the content, whether they agree with it or not. Because of this, we felt it would be a violation of trust to broadcast the episode. Then McKenzie pulled and banned the episode from apt Alabama Public Television. Okay, this has had some criticism. I have criticism for this. Alabama Public Television, or APT for short, is part of PBS affiliate station. Alabama Public Television, or APT, is actually an affiliate of PBS, a PBS affiliate. Well, Alabama Public Television, they're fucking stupid for banning the episode. They're fucking stupid for doing that. They pulled the episode from air in Alabama, which is fucking stupid for them to do that not realize what they've done results in controversy and results in backlash. GLAAD, Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, however, argued that with LGBTQ visibility at an all-time high on television, including the, in the kids and family programming genre, this attack to censor the content is not only mean-spirited, but it's a losing battle. The uptick of LGBTQ characters and stories on kids' TV shows has been, has been met with praise from families of all kinds in media need to put context into extremely fringe anti-LGBTQ organizations and individuals who speak out against any inclusion. TV worlds often reflect our actual world in today that includes LGBTQ parents and families. LGBTQ parents and their children deserve to see themselves reflected in media, and if the leadership of this public broadcasting station cannot serve the interest of the entire public, it's time to find someone who can. Birmingham Methodist Church decided to screen the episode altogether. First United Methodist Church of Birmingham. Located in Birmingham, Alabama, hosted a wedding party on June 15, 2019 while screening Mr. Ratburn in the Very Special Someone episode. The director of the festival, Rachel Morgan, got permission from WGBH to screen the episode at the wedding party. Morgan, when hearing Alabama's decision, stated, Personally, I was in disbelief and a little ashamed for our state. With all due respect to Alabama Public Television, or APT for short, it simply doesn't speak well for Alabama on a national level to censor such content. It made me sad, mostly for the message that it potentially sends to children, that if the lives of members of the LGBTQ community don't deserve the same rep representation as others. Okay, I'll explain some more information. Here's some trivia behind this. This is an extended video than I normally than I normally would read. It says here, trivia, this episode reveals that Mr. Ratburn is homosexual, although the terms gay or homosexual are never used. In fact, Mr. Ratburn could easily have been marrying a man or a woman in the script, that, it, that it's that subtle. Jane Lynch guest stars in the episode as Mr. Ratburn's older sister, Patty. This is not the first time Arthur franchise has depicted same-sex marriage. In 2005, Postcards from Buster aired the episode Sugar Time, which included scenes of Buster meeting several real-life children with lesbian parents in Hinesburg, Vermont. At the time, Vermont was one of the few states to recognize civil unions for same-sex parents. The terms lesbian and homosexual were, were also never said in that episode, but Sugar Time ignited national controversy when then Secretary of Education Margaret Spellings demanded PBS return federal funding used to produce the episode. PBS subsequently removed the episode from their schedule, but several member stations chose to independently air it, including Arthur's co-producer WGBH in Boston. The significance of this episode was not lost on Arthur creator Mark Brown. Now, I'm going to actually read Mark Brown's statement interviewed by the CBC or Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Then it'll be the end of the video. I'm not sure I'm not any different than millions of other families around the world that have people that we that we love who are gay and who are young families raising children, and it makes me very sad that these young families are not really are not really well represented or hardly represented at all in our media, and I don't think that it's a good thing. This happened to be one of the ideas that we would have a teacher getting married, perhaps, and the more we talked about it, the more we saw it as an opportunity for a learning experience, and that this great, and this is a great way to represent another part of life that so seldom gets portrayed on television. I started to get emails from family members and friends about your blowing up Twitter, and I started to read some of the comments from people and just it made me feel great that we did something that was really helpful to so many people. A parent has the opportunity to watch television with their kids and explain things and expand the story that they're watching together and share their values. That's, I think, one of the beauties of television. You know art reflects life and life reflects art, and I think kids need to see what's happening in the world. I would hate to live in a world which is sanitized and censored, and that's really something I can't get behind. 
That was Mark Brown's statement interviewed by the CBC. Basically, long story short, Arthur's had two episodes, one being in 2020, 2019, called Mr. Ratburn and the Very Social Someone. Another one is called Sugar Time Episode from Postcards from Buster. Darn! Here goes an ad that covers up the entire half of the page on mobile. Great, I hate it when it does it. The ad just takes up the entire left half of the screen, causing trouble. This is the episode Sugar Time that actually aired in February 2nd, 2005, and it was done in Hinesburg, Vermont. But the thing is, this episode completely got slightly restricted due to because it had controversy. It says here, Sugar Time was not aired nationally on PBS after it was criticized by then-Secretary of State Margaret Spellings for depicting two sets of lesbian parents. Vermont was one of the few states at the time to recognize same-sex civil unions. However, some PBS stations chose to, independent air, to independently air the episode, including Arthur's co-producer, WGH Boston. Same thing like I read earlier, that the terms lesbian and homosexual are never used in the episode. Instead, Buster remarks that it's not it's a lot of moms and one of the children refers to loving her stepmother. This approach, acknowledging the existence of same-sex couples while not making it the focus of the story, was reused nearly 15 years later for the episode Mr. Ratburn and a Very Special Someone. So the same thing was nearly was reused nearly 15 years later. It says, despite the controversy, the episode was included in the DVD and in the VHS of Buster's Outdoor Journeys. Arthur writer Cousy Cram, or Cousy Cram, later wrote the play Dusty in the Big Bad World, which premiered in 09, based on the controversy surrounding this episode and the writing team's reaction. The story of the episode was adapted as the book Buster's Sugar Time. So basically, this episode got put into a book and into an episode of Postcards from Buster. It came as episode first, then it got spawned into a book. Okay, that's exactly going to explain how in the world that the whole controversy behind Sugar Time, the Postcards from Buster episode, followed by the Mr. Ratburn and the Very Special Someone, that caused a lot of stir for PBS kids in general. It basically caused quite a stir that Alabama Public Television, known as APT, stupidly decided to censor the episode from airing in Alabama, but a church in Alabama decided to screen the episode from permission with WGBH anyway, due to because Alabama t Public Television chose to block the episode altogether from being aired. But other PBS affiliate stations chose to air Mr. Ratburn and Very Special Someone. Before I go, I want to say I watched Arthur, Mr. Ratburn, and Very Special Someone here in Georgia. It aired in Georgia. But Alabama was like, nope, we can't show that because it's got LGBTQ in it. They were like, uh-uh-uh, they weren't going to show it. So, obviously, it looks embarrassing for WGBH, PBS to have to deal with Alabama Public Television or APT, an affiliate station of PBS that blocked Mr. Ratburn and the very special someone from being aired in Alabama while all, all other U.S. states showed the episode anyway, including Georgia, it showed it too. So that's two controversies, actually three controversies. One, the United Methodist Church, the one I read earlier in the video, explains the whole controversy behind um, LGBTQ issues causing some churches to split or distance, distance themselves from it including the Sugar Time episode from Postcards from Buster, and the Ver Mr. Ratburn and the Very Special Someone that was made 15 years later that automatically was also talked about. So that's all I have to say, but this is William Armstrong signing out. See you next time. Bye-bye.